We are doing it again this week. More rapid fire questions. Welcome to the Dream Interpretation Podcast with Michael and Sandy. Due to the popularity, here are some more rapid fire questions and answers. What does it mean when you levitate up while in bed in your dream? Well, levitation in a dream is about uh, having a strong intellect. Yeah, we physically, our body can't move, but we mentally project our mind. So it means that you um, are mentally rising above a problem. That's ultimately what it means. That's what flying in a dream means using your mind to move away from the emotional state of the issue. Um, so there's a few things go with that. You'd have the ability to do absent healing, which is healing people at a distance. That's where you project your mind onto your target and heal them through the thought processes in your own mind. You'd be very good at influencing people about things because when you're explaining it to them, they're like, yeah, I get it. I get it when you say it, but as soon as you're gone, I don't get it. So Strong mind, ability to do absent healing, ability to hypnotize, they come together. And then um, this ability to project your mind, which is what the other one where I said people get things when you explain them. It's usually connected with other uh, gifts. It's a very good complement to other gifts. So if you're helping heal clients, um, even through counseling or whatever you're doing or whatever therapies, because of your the way your mind works, they're very comfortable accepting your direction. So it's like, okay, I'm going to do what Michael says, or I'm going to do whatever. Uh, and it's very beneficial for them. You know, it gives them the, the clarity. Basically, you're projecting your clarity onto them and they get it. What about a timeline dream, not fluid or quirky as unusual? Not what? Fluid or quirky. I don't know what you mean by timeline dream. Are you changing ages in a dream? Because you can change ages in a dream and it doesn't matter. It doesn't bring you back to age two if you're two in the dream. Um, it's different symbols will will uh, represent the timeline of the dream. Mm. Uh, what does it mean to hear somebody calling your name that wakes you up? Oh, probably means you're clairaudient. It's, uh, you know, that you hear your guides. Now, you probably have another mechanism too, but... Uh, it's kind of cool. Do you wake up with songs in your head that you can't get out of your head? You know, this is one of the things that kind of identifies a clear audience. Uh, they have a part of a song in, a, in their head, like a half a line, and it just repeats on the loop. And they're like, oh my God. So what you do is you acknowledge that. And then once you acknowledge that, another song's going to pop in and it's going to be another line or part of a line. And you just put them together. And eventually when you acknowledge the last piece, that's the end of the message. And all that looping stops. Um, if that happens for you, you're definitely clear audience. So this one's interesting. I used to have a reoccurring dream in which I was trying to swim up to the surface in the pool, but I always ran out of air. Their friend suggested it might have been a birth uh, trauma dream. My mom told me I had the umbilical cord wrapped around my neck. After this info, I never had the dream again. Yeah, perfect, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, we're in water. We develop in water, of course, in the womb. And um, if if it's around your neck while you're being born, you're in water or you're in that space, it's, it's not good. So that's one of the things I said like earlier. If you're working on issues around masculine side, when you stop dreaming of men, you've 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 knocked it on the head. Now they'll come back later on. You'll have to do more. But uh, so here, if somebody tells you what it means and it stops, you can be pretty sure that's nail on the head. Um, that's what it's about. So does it mean, oh, now I know what it is. Great. No, 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 no. You know what it is. So now look at how it impacted you in your life. Could you imagine the terror? Like if I said, okay, let me just choke you for 90 seconds. And then we'll have a conversation the way we're, you know, a normal conversation after that. You're like, no way. I'm reporting you to the police. I'm doing all this sort of stuff. So something like that happened to you and you don't have the conscious memory of it. And the dream is trying to show you, look, this happened You've got to deal with it because it's major. Yeah. So this person said, whenever I realize I'm lucid dreaming, I get so excited that I wake up. Oh, uh, yeah, can... me too. I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> if we can stay in there, what could, could be a good thing to do with that dream? <laughs> Ask the characters in the dream what they represent. So it doesn't matter who they are. You can you can ask the chair, what aspect of me do you represent? Ask the cooker. If there's a person, talk to them, but always ask them what they represent. Why are you in the dream? because they'll be able to answer that. 
If you can identify guides, then you can ask them, what's the dream about? What is the dream asking me to do? They will be able to answer that. In fact, guides in a dream can answer anything. They're the spiritual authority and you unmask them by if they have a title, like that last one person who had the custodian, the librarian, the principal, all that. They're all guides. So if you were lucid in that dream, you could ask any one of them anything you wanted and their answers will be true. Uh, guides are the only character in a dream that are infallible. Everybody else only fits the profile of why they're in the dream. And if you ask them anything else, they will answer it, but it doesn't matter. It means nothing. Don't even listen to anything else they said. So, yeah, you. so you can very quickly get at the meaning of the dream. And if you're told it in a dream, it's very profound. Like it makes sense. Because remember I said, you know why you're having the dream during the dream. So when your guide tells you, you just wake up with that pre uh, amazing sense of, I just figured this out. This is true. Like it really hits home. You know, it's really good. Mm. So fear of height stream ending up somewhere that is difficult to traverse or get down from. Well, if you have a fear of heights, then you're going to use that in your dreams to represent other things that, that bring up that same sense. Uh, dreams exaggerate, but a fear of heights or a fear of anything else um, is a perfect one to bring it up. So basically what your, your mind is doing is saying, oh yeah, that fear is like this fear. You know, like it just substitutes. What if you're drunk or intoxicated in your dream, but not your regular life state? So it means that you are suppressing uh, your nature in some negative way, because that's what alcohol does. It suppresses your your feelings. That's why you're able to talk to the woman across the bar or whatever happens to be uh, it, when you have alcohol. And it means the same in a dream. So you're suppressing whatever the subject matter of the dream is, you're suppressing that part of your nature and you need to stop doing that. Mm, very good. What do freckles, fair skin, and no ginger idea. hair? <laughs> well, ginger hair is usually a sign of a guide in a dream. Unless you have uh, ginger hair, then you would still uh, channel and go, okay, is that a guide? So blonde hair and ginger hair uh, are typically indicative of somebody who's a guide in a dream. And you'll know uh, guides usually are in front of you to your right, and they're usually raised in some way, like they might be on a platform up two steps, or they might be sitting on a tall stool or a horse or a bike or something anyway that elevates them. Um, there's many other things. They often give you a gift. Um, they speak with authority. Um, anyway, so if you can recognize them, then you know, yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> what if the dream has my eyes stuck uh, shut with white out in the corners of my eyes. <laughs> Her eyes are shut with white out. Mm -hmm. In the corner of the eyes. Okay, that's a tricky one. Sorry. <laughs> so you're clairvoyant. Um, you're a clairvoyant channel. Uh, can you see spirits uh, in the physical world now? So it's clairvoyance, but you're not using it. Um <clears throat> Here's one. There's a direct correlation between abilities that we bring with us and refuse to use and health issues. This one isn't a health issue, but it's just interesting to note, like there's many reasons why we should develop and use our gifts. We repay our karmic debts with them. We help other people. We raise our own vibration. Um, but it also, it keeps us healthy to use our gifts. But you've got that ability, but you you don't want to see what you can see. So whiteout is the, um, the whiteout is negative on its own, but the corners are also negative in a dream, you know, so you've limited your clairvoyant ability. Stop mm -hmm. it. <laughs> Very good. What's the difference between a dream and a vision while you are sleeping? Well, if it's a vision when you're sleeping, <laughs> isn't it the same thing? I'm not sure I understand the question, but if you have um, the clairvoyant ability where you get movies, then the vision is going to be more reflective of just how nature is, whether it's nature in the spirit world or, or something happening here. So we can have visions that we don't interpret. But if you are clairvoyant, which is you get images from the spirit world when they're talking to you, then a vision, you would interpret it the same way as um, as dreams, looking at the symbolic interpretation of the various different things. Let's see, is that true for this dreamer? Is that true for this dreamer? Are they clairvoyant? Yeah, they are clairvoyant. I don't think you get the visions. I mean, I mean, in the sense of just take them at face value. Um, there's something quirky about it. It's kind of like they go in the direction of what you would like things to be. So you can't really interpret them. Um, yeah, they're more feel good, like motivational experiences for you, I think. 
And someone asked, what does childhood home generally symbolize? It symbolizes issues from that time in your life. Um, and it's like, a, it's the most common house that people find themselves in their dreams or in their childhood home. When you work on yourself, what you'll notice is the timeline of your dream is later and later and later, which is really nice because it's like, finally, I've kicked all the things that I, I, I started off with. Uh, I've dealt with those. But yeah, childhood, it just says, here's something that went on that you need to look at. Um, if you have older brothers and sisters, it's great. Um, because then you can ask them like what was going on when I was born. If you have younger ones, then you can look at how they were treated and go, I was probably treated that way too. Um, so, but if you're, if you're on your own, you're very reliant on your dreams, showing you the way things actually were. What about meeting someone in my dream that I knew as a small child, like one or two old years old, and it felt like an euphoric soul connection. Wow. Somebody can remember somebody. Okay, you must have known this person later than the age one or two, presumably for you to, uh, although I have a friend, I remember we met somebody one time, we were in our 20s, and I go, how did you know that guy was Derek? And he goes, we went to uh, kindergarten together. I'm like, get, get, get out of here. Anyway, I remember nothing before at the age nine, I'm joking, but yeah. So amazing if you can remember somebody that was only there, what did they mean to you then? But it's going to be a timeline of the dream, it's going to bring you back to then. Um, is there a special connection with that person? There could be, especially because it's going so young, but uh, I need to channel on it properly. If you learn to channel successfully, why do you need to interpret dreams as well? Ooh, I like oh, that that's a good question. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so they both have their values. The, the way it works is this. Your dreams come from your higher self. Your higher self is the only spirit in existence that has skin in the game of your life skin in the game of you achieving everything you came here to achieve your guides your others all these other things they're going to help you but it doesn't it doesn't equate to the same level that your higher self is in it if you go backwards in this lifetime your higher self goes backwards if you go forward your higher self goes forward raises in vibration so your higher self knows the whole plan of your life everything that was designed why what it's going to do for you how it's going to help other people etc 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 and your dreams cover everything they cover everything about your life everything about anything in past lives uh, that hold you back, all that sort of stuff. And that's the big difference. They are the full map of your life. Channeling is like a, a ch arriving at a corner or an intersection on a map and being able to ask questions about that intersection. Dreams tell you everything, where you're going, why, where you've come from, why, all that stuff. And channeling, you can ask specific questions, but you need to know what to ask. And you're not going to get answers. Like you can't just say, tell me what my guides want to tell me because they can't break the rules. They can't tell you the stuff that you haven't figured out. They will certainly tell you things that are going to be useful and helpful and all that sort of stuff. But like I said earlier, they can't even tell you that you're infiltrated because they haven't looked to see if you, but your higher self sees all of that. So if you know where you are and know, if you interpret from your dreams, I need to learn to channel or I need to develop this particular skill set, then you can channel and ask all sorts of questions around it. And so the two are an amazingly good companion for each other. One tells you what you should be asking questions about, and the other one gives you the ability to ask the questions and get the answers. That's cool. Yeah, I like the I like the map. Earth are the map, or dreams are the map, and uh, channeling is the direction. Yeah. Uh, so let's see. When a guy told me you are an earth angel in a dream, does that mean a certain level? I remember Michael was talking about sometimes about spiritual levels, something about spiritual levels. Sorry. You're an earth angel. So you're already an angel, which means you're here as a light worker. Um, doesn't mean you, you don't have issues that you need to work on and all that. You kind of, we need to bring an anchor regardless of our level. We need to bring an anchor. We, we put a black stripe through ourselves in some way, and that allows us to get to this dense vibration. But Definitely, you're meant to be working in the spiritual field uh, if you're at that level. Um, you'll have find you'll have loads of gifts. There's a few gifts that are are given to anybody that's guide level or above, and one is pro prophecy. So you have the ability to um, to know the future. All angels do. You also can access akashic records. And you wouldn't necessarily. You know, that's something that a lot of people train to do, and they shouldn't because they're idiots. You shouldn't be looking at that. It's like, yeah, I'm able to open the mailbox of my neighbor, 
but I shouldn't. And that's what reading the Akashic Records is about. If you brought the gift and you know how to use it, use it and use it wisely. But if you're an angel, it's going to be automatic. If you need to help somebody, you're going to pull from those records, the things you need to do. So there's many other, or you need to know, there's many things that you get because of the level. Um, and then huge question is, why would you come here as an angel? What is your mission? That's going to be cool. Yeah, I like that. Here's the, I think this will probably be the last one. Sometimes when I go to bed, I can hear a faint orchestra or just someone singing. Of course, there is not a radio on and it's not related to a dream. Just curious. Yeah, yeah. Clear audience. Yeah. Yeah. You know, of all, there's many different types of channeling and um, <clears throat> there's some very unique ones. You know, we, we come across people all the time in every course that they have their own special ability for channeling. And um, what we always find, though, with the Claronian people, uh, you can be envious of that because it's like, OK, I'm trying to figure out, I get a feeling that it's this, this, this. Oh, yeah, here's what the what the answer is to that question you asked. With Claronians, you're able to go, they're saying X, Y and Z. And the person goes, well, are you sure that's right? And they go, eh, that's what they're saying. <laughs> and it can be really <laughs> annoying because it's like, all right, there's no argue with you. Um Anyway, it doesn't matter. Whatever your mechanism is, you can get really good at that mechanism. But I love the clear audience because it's so crystal clear. Um, I dream a lot about the sea or beach or being on a boat, putting my legs in the sea or a clear river. The water is always super clear. Good, good, good. Yeah, they're good dreams. <clears throat> so the beach is about your spiritual approach because it's the approach to the sea. The sea is about uh, spirituality. Life comes from uh, the oceans. Life comes from the water on the planet but physical life does, but really life comes from the spirit world. So the ocean is a, is a good um, analogy for that. And putting your legs in it is asking you to be comfortable stepping into your spiritual field, you know, doing that. Um, so, and I like that it's clear. I had a dream I was swimming, swimming with a sperm whale. So whales are about um, channeling, Whales are mammals just like us. Uh, they breathe air, and but yet they can live in the ocean. So it's like you have this special ability to go into the spirit world. We all have that ability. The special part is coming back. So um, <laughs> channels can go to the spirit world, get information, bring it back and share it. And so dolphins and whales are, are very common symbols for people who are channels. Um, so, Michael, um, what is a cottage or a cabin? Uh, well, physical houses and dreams are typically about your body. And sometimes we need more context. But uh, what's what's happening in the house? Is there a problem in the house? Is there a problem? Are you in a particular room? Because uh, then it's going to be about like the bathroom's elimination system, the, repro the bedroom's reproductive system or spiritual gifts. Um, you know, the attic can be about the mind. The basement can be about the subconscious. Uh, living room can be about the heart, the fireplace definitely is, and so on and so on and so on. So what's going on? Or is the cabin in a forest, which would make it more about elimination system and so on. But uh, yeah, the, so one of the things that I like about the Ashling method, and I went to say this earlier and I forgot to finish what I was saying, it proves itself to you. So if your dream is about your elimination system, you're going to see several symbols in the dream to back that up. If it's about a particular gift, of channeling, you're going to see lots of other symbols to back that up. So you you will probably find two or three symbols in the same dream that when you look up the dictionary, the interpretation uh, matches each other. And that's really good. And if you don't, then your next dream in the same night is probably going to use another symbol to cover the same topic. And so it proves itself to you, which is great. Um, what does it mean when you see yourself in a dream looking at you, the dreamer? The dream is asking you to take a an amusing higher level look at your life and the things you do in life. You know, like if in that dream you were wondering why you were doing what you were doing or just find it interesting to observe, then that's what it's about. It's not about keeping people at a distance or anything. So yeah. What else have we got? Uh with dreams about moving and living in different houses that I've never seen been as simple to interpret as calling to move? No, it's about what's different about the houses. So houses in a dream will represent, this is my position on life or my position on a particular subject matter. And then moving house is actually quite positive. 
especially if it's a bigger house or nicer place or whatever, uh, brighter, bigger windows, for instance, then it's saying <clears throat> the dream is, is showing that you're able to move your position. You're, you're not just stuck where you are. You're able to say, okay, in relation to the subject matter, I'm willing to move here or put in the work that it takes to move me into this better space. What does it mean to look up at the sky and see a UFO? It means that you are seeing your guides. So our guides are angels in the heavens, like a UFO also flies around the heavens, right? We could say. So it symbolizes that you have an ability to communicate with your guides, um, or at least they're very much trying to communicate with you. Now, they will in waking life anyway, but um, but you can have a stronger um stronger connection. Quite often what happens in these dreams is the UFOs get closer and closer and then you try to hide and things like that. But ultimately, um, I see these dreams for people who uh, are going to end up being uh, pretty good channels at some point or working in the spiritual field with their guides in a very strong uh, way. You know, like they know what their guides do. They know how they help them. They know what their spiritual mission is and so on. Uh, it's a very good dream. Okay. I had a dream that I was pregnant and I told my partner that I only wanted it if he wanted it. Okay. So uh, pregnancy in a dream is a bit like an exam that I talked about earlier. It's a new aspect of you is going to come into the physical world. It's about to be born. It's not about having a baby. Um, and whatever it is will be worth the effort it takes to bring a baby into the world. Like symbolically, that's what it's saying. That, you know, the pain and effort required to bring this new part of you in is going to be worth everything. It's always a new and positive one, but then you spoiled it by saying, I only wanted it if he wanted it. So it says that when it comes to me developing myself, I go, you know what? I'm not going to join NASA and I'm not going to learn all these great things about myself because my partner wants me to be dumb. Now I'm, I'm making fun of it, but you are letting your partner hold you back. Um, it's not your partner's holding you back. You're holding yourself back and blaming your partner. So don't mm, do it. That was good. I dreamt for years of being intimate relationship with a male rock singer. Okay. <laughs> so you're a channel. So um, men and dreams, masculine side, they represent the masculine side. And hopefully that the, uh, the rock singer that you dreamt of is super confident and all those other manly masculine things. I've said manly as a joke, but confidence is a masculine energy trait. And so the idea is that you would, um, want to get in touch, like you're intimate with him. So that's perfect. So I'm intimately getting in touch with my own channeling ability and, and developing confidence in using that ability. Um, music comes from the spirit world. If you ever read books about near death experiences, people talk about hearing this harmonious music the whole time they're there. And many musicians say that that's where they get their music from. But, um, yeah, it's, it, that's what it means in dreams. Hmm. How do you know when you have awakened? What was the event that caused your spiritual awakening? So that's a good question. Well, I'm question. going to talk about, yeah, I'm going to talk about that tomorrow. And for me, there's no question about this event changed my life. I was an atheist. Uh, I didn't believe in the spirit world. And not only did I not believe in it, if you believed in it, I would mock you. I would follow you around. You couldn't even just leave the room. I would follow you and mock you in the next room. And uh, so I'm sure I've got plenty of karma for that. But um, and it makes it ironic that here I am saying to everybody, hey, the spirit world is real. But it also made it very easy for me. The fact that I suddenly started seeing spirits and I still see spirits, I, there was no, there was two, there was a, a possibility for a while, uh, you know, a few seconds that maybe I'm mad and I'm hallucinating. Um, but I, I'd never done drugs. Uh, you know, I'm one of those people. And um, so I could see them. I could see these three spirits in the bedroom. And I couldn't believe how nobody else could see them. I couldn't understand how my wife couldn't see them. And it, like it immediately fixed my atheism. I knew the spirit world was real. So so while I was going along trying to find all the other things, like what's life about, at least it wasn't on faith. It was like, no, this is true. There's something here. Why is this happening? But one of the spirits was nasty and used to hurt me. And every two weeks it would show up and basically kick the crap out of me. And And so that's why I had to try find an answer to stop that spirit from doing what it was doing. But I'll talk more about that tomorrow. At least I think I do. And mm -hmm. Yeah, I do. I do in the afternoon. Um, 
So what was the original question? My awakening. Yeah. So everybody's awakening is different, you know, but that was mine, uh, but very clear. And again, um, for me, it happened. I didn't know how I was suddenly able to see spirits. And I was, I'd even written my first book and it was 10 years later, maybe. And I still didn't know why me, why did I suddenly see spirits? But there was an answer and I finally got the answer. What else have we got? Um, I often dream of very bright spaces. I'm not noticing the windows or the sun specifically, but how bright the space is from the sun outside is very prominent. Yeah, well, you know it's bright from the sun, so that's good. And so you're a healer. Um, and is it like reflections of the sun on the walls? Like, So it's hard to imagine this, but just super bright. Where's the light coming from? Is it a big spacious place like a cathedral? You know, that would all matter. But um, but like quite quite good. Um, uh, yeah, quite a good dream. Like when you're when you're working on yourself. If you if you go to somebody that regresses you to interlife, like to where you go between lifetimes and stuff like that, I, that sounds kind of silly. Our home is the spirit world. We don't go to a place and hang out till we get another lifetime, but. Sometimes from the perspective that we do it from here, we go, let's look at what you did between lifetimes because we're idiots, we're humans, and we go, it's all about us. You know, we must have created the whole universe. So let's talk about it from this perspective. And that's what we do. But anyway, if you if you do those kind of regressions, you will tend to see that you're building, um, like you go to a, a building that's a particular way one time, the next time after a lifetime, there's more to it. It has, has an extra wing and then it's bigger again and bigger again. And eventually it becomes very cathedral-like. And then even beyond that, it can get, it can be like a cathedral with a glass dome and so on and so on and so on. Um, so ultimately we come here to unearth aspects about us so that we, we are more vibrant, higher vibration, understand more about ourselves, have less fears, have less darkness, let's say, within us. And I don't mean darkness in, you know, like I'm in an evil way. Um, but but we come here to, to purge all of that. Take care. Thank you, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.